Yo, what's going on, Kones? It's your boy, Ice Cream, back at it again with another fresh video for you guys. And today, we're gonna do something a little different. I always get asked, yo, Ice, how do you do this? How do you put your phone screen onto the PC? How do you do your audio? How do you connect your game audio into... I get asked a lot of questions about how I stream and how I create content. So, today's video is going to be about my entire setup, how I make things work, uh, what equipment I have, and bitrate settings and all that sort of stuff on OBS. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just to help you guys get started for when Apex Legends Mobile drops and you want to become the biggest CC in the world and or whatever content you're, you're, you're gonna do basically. I am a mobile streamer so everything to do with my setup is mobile gaming and I'm gonna show you how my phone's connected to the PC, the audio, the video and all that sort of stuff so yeah without further ado guys let's kick it! <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna keep this quite simple then, guys. This is my setup for when I'm actually playing. So this is my playtime streaming content creation setup. Um, let's just start off with the lights first, guys. With the lights because um, like, quite a lot of stuff are turned off. So whenever I'm actually content creating, these lights are normally on. So what I've done is I've um I have two of these. One's actually glued to the back of my monitor, so I can I can have a, a lighting on there because when a lighting is pointed directly at you, it's quite harsh. So in some occasions, I only have one of these lights pointed so it bounces off of the wall and it's, it becomes a soft light right so it provides some sort of smooth ambient backlight and then if i need something quite more intense i'll turn this one on which is just right above my webcam so it gives a really nice clear image of my beautiful face Ooh. But anywho, yeah, 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 yeah. So those are my lighting. I'll turn them off so you, can, you guys can actually see the video very well. There we go. And this is all, this is my cooling pad. So I'll turn this on as well. So when it's on, the lights are on. But I noticed earlier that these lights go a little bit weird on the screen. So we're gonna turn these off for the purpose of this video. So just imagine those RGB blue lights just lit up right so this is my setup so most important thing right okay so i have a dummy phone right here it's actually broken um i've turned it round so it doesn't really blast light on my screen yeah so this is my gaming phone my gaming phone is connected via via the usb slot the normal usb slot to this splitter so let's talk about a mechanical aspect first so we got a cooling pad here which is mounted on a laptop stand so i'll just move this so you can see it a little bit so it's over here, right? So it's like it's, it's mounted on these on one of these laptop stands that you can actually adjust this, the, the the height and the angle for. So you can adjust it like that. See, you can adjust it to whatever makes you feel comfortable, right? I've used one of those double adhesive, double sided adhesive strips, and then just put it on the back of this, so it sits perfectly on this stand, so it doesn't really move right so that's my setup as far as the, the cooling pad goes i used to play with the phone on here so like a tabletop setup like this but i didn't really like it i didn't get used to it I, I i just didn't find it nice so i went back to gyro but still kept the cooling fan here to keep my phone cool because it's being blasted right from the top of the um right from the middle i mean right from the middle of the cooling pad which is the biggest cooler so while i'm playing in here and then when i'm chilling i'll just put it down there and then reading the chat and stuff like that let's just minimize obs because i think it can be a little bit distracting so yeah, here we go. So this is the phone. My cooling pad is here. Then we have two things that are just randomly, not randomly, actually strategically mounted. Again, with a du double adhesive, double sided adhesive tapes. So this is my splitter and this is my capture card. This is the card that captures the image, the videos that are basically my phone screen. I purposely stuck them on top of a fan because they get really hot. Naturally, the splitter and the, and the capture card gets actually quite hot. And when they get hot, you drop frames, your, your game starts to lag your recording starts to drop frames and stuff like that so i put them right where the fans are so it keeps them cool and it actually keeps them quite cool they, 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 they never get really hot so yeah my phone is connected through a usb these let me just show you guys so this is a this is a usb extender actually so i bought a usb c extender male to female um because the the usb that comes with with these splitters is only like literally a few inches short so it, it's really not ideal when you're gaming especially when you're a gyroscope player where your phone's moving all the time so i bought an extender so i plug that in there bam and then i plug this in here by the way guys i'm gonna put all the links i'm gonna put all the links of these items that i bought from amazon i'm gonna put them in the description below so you guys can see exactly what i bought and if it's not available in your country you can have a look at you know similar items but one thing very very important to note about this about this extender you have to buy the right one guys not every single extender has 
has the capability to um, charge and provide pass through. Pass through is something that will let your video pass through the, to, to the splitter, but a splitter to pass through to the capture card, right? So you have to buy the right cable. You have to read about it. You can't just buy any cable. Some extenders can only charge and no pass through that sort of stuff. And some pass through cables can only pass through 30 FPS. So you need to really read about it. And I bought one that can handle 60 FPS, 1080p for, for a splitter use. Because if you don't get the right extender, you may as well not bother because it's not gonna, it's not gonna transfer your cable. So yeah, so that's one thing. So this is, is, is connected to my splitter, which extends it. So I can then freely play my game as I normally would when it's on charge. So I bought the right splitter. The splitter that I have is 1080p, 60 FPS. So that's all I need. I don't really want to go 4K or anything like that. I just want something quite simple. So 1080p, 60 FPS does the job and make sure that you have something that can handle maybe like 65 watts up to what 100 watts output because you need that for certain phones to be unlike ultra fast charge or fast charge or whatever your phone calls it so you need to make sure that your splitter has the output capability to keep your phone charging while gaming because if it's only got like a 20 20 watt output then your phone's just gonna die even though you've got a really fast charger when it goes into this splitter the splitter can only put a certain amount of wattage out so there's no point so you need to get the right splitter the right cables and all that sort of stuff so the charger is obviously connected to a, a really good ultra fast charger and then the hdmi cable slot is connected into my splitter so my splitter has two different types of output. The, one of the outputs is a, is a direct HDMI output that you can plug into your PC's graphics card or it's straight into the monitor or whatever. But because I don't have a spare HDMI slot, this capture card actually allows you to have an output through the USB 3. It goes in, HDMI goes in, USB 3 goes out, and then I have it plugged into my USB 3 slot on my laptop. And let's just get OBS up. There we go. So I have it picked up up as red hdmi oh you won't really even see because i'm not screen recording my uh my obs so i have it this is the red hdmi as a source and then it just picks it up as a video so one thing that you guys need to note about android is that hdmi and obs will not capture your audio it just does not it just does does not do it at all it, like no matter how hard you try there's a privacy settings on android that actually prevents you right from the phone to transfer audio into your capture card or whatever however you're doing it unless you have a fix this fix was actually incredibly 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 difficult to find however it is actually such a simple fix right so i have this app straight from the microsoft store called bluetooth audio receiver it's called bluetooth audio receiver so what happens is my phone is connected via hdmi for the video right so you guys are going to be wondering well how do you capture the audio well there's an app from the microsoft app store called bluetooth audio receiver all you've got to do is go to your start menu and then go into apps and then it will open up the store for you and then it will be this one it's literally called bluetooth audio receiver that's all you need to know so what you've got to do first is connect your phone via bluetooth as you normally would right so connect your phone look for your laptop or pc or whatever device you've got connect it and once it's connected your phone should pop up on here so my rogue phone 5 at s20 plus is connected so i'll just click s20 plus open click open connection and my phone's bluetooth is off i'm literally recording with it right now so connect it and and once it's connected, that is it. Your phone is connected and whatever whatever audio your phone is playing, it will play straight into your PC. One thing that you need to know about the Bluetooth audio receiver app is it goes directly as a desktop audio. When you're in OBS, make sure you have your desktop audio being picked up, right? On the audio mixer, you can test that out by playing something on your phone and then make sure it's unmuted and it will go directly as a desktop audio on your phone. So whenever your phone plays any type of audio, any type of sound, any type of audio, it will go straight into your phone and your OBS will pick it up if you have it set up for it to be picked up. I am completely happy with it being desktop audio. I don't really use anything else on my desktop apart from my phone. So whatever setup I have from the phone, audio coming in, it will just get picked up automatically. Now, to some people, this might not be good. You might want to split your audio up. I haven't actually done any, any sort of research into how to do this. I haven't tried at all to try and split the audio up because I am completely happy with my audio going in as a 
direct um, desktop audio so I'm really cool with that I guess I could try and find out how to actually do that for you so you can split the audio so your phone goes in to your PC and then becomes split as its own separate individual channel if enough people want it I'll make a tutorial for it um, but yeah just let, just let me know in the comment section below if you want me to split the audio up so that's as far as the audio goes so now we have my video and my audio set up right so everything is set up everything is fine and dandy is getting picked up so now we're gonna go into my OBS settings all right before we get into the actual settings and what I have and all that sort of stuff I am not going to go through each individual setting why because I have no idea what most of them are I just followed them from like a tutorial and found what's best for me after fine-tuning a few things but yeah there are a lot of uh, like tutorials out there that you guys should check out I'm gonna put one in the link below where I actually found the best uh, settings for my PC but yeah what I actually strongly suggest is you guys watch tutorials based on what PC you have so figure out what CPU you have RAM graphics card that sort of stuff and find the tutorial type it on YouTube best OBS settings for this CPU that GPU and go from there most of the time these tutorials they'll explain what individual setting is so yeah go through one of those tutorials and you'll actually learn better than if I tried to explain what the settings mean streaming wise this is my setup it's very very basic I'm not I'm not I haven't set it up to push my limits into you know 4k or anything like that because I've had my fair share of things breaking down and internet struggling to keep up with bitrate and stuff like that and I'm quite happy with what I have but anyway this is my streaming setup so don't ask me what any of this means I just went on YouTube and, and actually uh and actually found loads of guys and just tried loads of guys out and figured out what works best for me and so uh, and stuff like that all the important things are i have cbr rate control bitch rate i have 6500 kilobits per second you can go up to i think 10,000 or 12 and a half thousand and that's a cap i think that's a cap for most streaming platforms but like i said i don't feel like i need it i don't want to bottleneck my pc while i'm streaming i like to do other things like chat and i don't want to slow anything down so six and a half k is is pretty decent for me it's quite nice keyframe interval i got it at two preset uh i got it set high profile is high gpu at zero max b frames at two uncheck look ahead i think by default this is on so I, I don't really know what that means but as soon as i unchecked it i noticed a big difference in terms of like fluidity of everything that i'm doing when i'm streaming and cycle visual tuning no idea what that is but keep it checked recording wise this is my setting so yeah i only re i don't record my entire stream what i have is i have replay buffer where i use my um oh i actually haven't shown you guys i have a foot pedal to capture all my clips so this as soon as i press this it will record the last 60 seconds in my in my gameplay we'll cover that in a second guys so yeah anyway going back to my recording settings so my recording is mainly for recording clips and i want the clips to be as as crisp as possible so this is where i really push things to the max i guess rate control we have cbr at 16,000 kilobits per second i don't really think you need anything above 10k but i i like to really push my clips so they look really nice keyframe interval two max quality profile high visual tuning on gpu zero max b frames two so my my clips would always look really nice so when i make a montage they'd look extra spicy but as far as streaming goes streaming platforms compress your videos anyway and it doesn't really ever come out as like 4k uh, 1080p crisp so i don't really pay too much attention into streaming i think i personally think vods on youtube are more important in terms of like growth so i'm just gonna focus on that for now but yeah this is my recording set things and this is what i use for my clipping all right so as far as audio goes everything is just basically the same they sound nice you know i i i don't really feel like i need to mess around with this i've got a pretty decent mic i have a sure m7 mic so yeah every audio wise everything is just in default i guess 160 this is another story on its own replay buffers so what i'm gonna do is i'm, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna teach you guys exactly how to install replay buffer i'll, I'll drop a link of where i learned how to install replay buffer but just to give you guys a brief introduction and replay buffer what this does is when you press a button where you have a hotkey let's say you have it bound as a key a 
as, as a space on your keyboard. When you press space, it will record a clip of the last 60 seconds that happened on your stream or on your video. So whenever you're playing, whenever you get a nice kill, I'll just hit my, my pedal at the bottom floor and it will just record the final six, the, the last 60 seconds that just happened. That's what Replay Buffer does. You can set it for longer. You can set it for 30 seconds. You can set it for ho however you want. So what I've done here is, so when I go into hotkeys, right? I go and then look for replay. So let's type replay buffer here. So what happens is it's the replay is bound as F15. Okay, let me briefly run through how I've actually got my foot pedal to work with replay buffer so I can start saving clips. So I bought this foot pedal from Amazon for about 10 pounds, I think it was, 10, 15 pounds, $20. So the way that it works is each foot pedal can work as any key or keystrokes that you want on your PC. It depends on the foot pedal that you buy. It can either only press one button at the same time, or it can do like a shift F5, alt F4, that kind of combo. It can do keystrokes for you, but yeah, it all just depends on which one that you buy. But the one that I've got allows me to actually do keystrokes where I can do shift F5 and all that stuff, but I don't actually even use that. One of the foot pedals, one of the pedals that I've got, I've got three. Um, So the, the right pedal, whenever I put my right foot down, it's just bound to F5. F15 doesn't actually exist on the keyboard, but there are hidden keys out there that don't exist on the keyboard mechanically. So anything from like F13 to about, I think it's F20, maybe even F30, I don't know, who knows. But yeah, I bound it as to F15. So I've, I've gone into here, instant replay, and then I clicked on a box, put my pedal down, and it, and it registers at F15. So whenever I want to record a clip of the last 60 seconds that just took place, I'll just put my right foot down. And then my left foot, I have it as mute my Discord mic. So yeah, you can, you can do it to whatever you want you can literally find whatever whatever process you have here on obs um and it will do that for you can even change scenes with it mute audio and all that sort of stuff but yeah that's how replay buffer works with my foot pedal guys and last but definitely not the least it is actually the simplest of them all right over here is i have like a blanket um, that I've folded up to put on my desk because playing hours on end with my elbows down, with my elbows down on the table, it can hurt, you know, it, it can start to ache. Um, So yeah, I've just got a nice comfortable pad over here with my blanket. Nothing special, nothing special. But yeah, back on the main screen now, guys. I hope that was helpful for you lot. And I know it wasn't like a full-on tutorial, but I just wanted to quickly show what my mobile gaming and streaming and content creation setup is actually like because there's actually not that many of them on YouTube and it's quite hard to find the right equipment. More, most important things to take away from this is buy the right cables, buy the right splitter, buy the right capture card. And I put all of the links in the description below. None of them were affiliate links. They should be affiliate links actually. But yeah, none of them are affiliate links. So I don't get any commission or whatever. These are just the right equipment that I've tested and use uh, that you guys watching, I guess, tend to like because you all keep coming back to my content. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for your boy, from your boy, guys and i uh, hope it helped if, if you actually liked the video if you found it helpful hit that like button and subscribe for some more videos in the future i'll see you in the next one guys peace